Hello everyone, this is Michael, though you may know me from Reddit or other places as Scourgicus, and this is the Selectives Podcast Addendum. So over the past weekend, a group of us got together to talk about Elder Scrolls lore, and I missed it. And it's really unfortunate because we were talking about The Prisoner, which is one of my favorite subjects in Elder Scrolls lore. So I thought I'd make up a quick video and just talk about a few things. Today I'll be talking mostly about The Prisoner as the Serpent and delving into some Jungian psychology. I'll also touch upon the need for a third, and uh, looking at some ideas from alchemy, but also talking about Numidium and Unmaking, based on something that Rotten Deadite said. Aramathias brought up this idea that the prisoner may be an expression of the serpent, that is, that they're there just to wreck the place, and I think that there's something to this. Uh, to talk about it, I want to delve for just a moment into Jungian psychology. In Jungian psychology, the self or uh, being, you know, who you are ultimately, uh, desires to exist in unity. But there is a fundamental problem, uh, and that is the division within the self between the persona and the shadow. What does that mean? The persona is your idealized self. It's the face that you show to the world. It's who you wish that you were. Right? Whereas the shadow is all the things about yourself that you don't like. And these two come into conflict. Now, I'm pretty sure that you're going to already be able to tell where this is going in Elder Scrolls lore, because we see this in the conflict between Anu and Padme. So in Elder Scrolls lore, the Godhead, or the Dreamer, witnesses the conflict between the Shadow and the Persona, which in this case would be Padme and Anu, respectively. However, we know from the in-game book, the Annotated Anuid, that this conflict actually leads to the murder of Padme by Anu. We'll come back to Nur in just a minute. And so Anu becomes an Amaranth and dreams his own dream, where these continued conflicts between Persona and Shadow uh, play out uh, first in Anu and Sithis, then Akatosh and Lorcan, but probably ultimately, and what we're most concerned with in the games, is the conflict between man and Myrrh. So in a very real sense, the Godhead, or the Dreamer, or in uh, the case of the Amaranth Anu, is both witness and prisoner to the conflict that rages within them, the conflict between Persona and Shadow. Now the trick comes because in almost every Elder Scrolls game, the player character starts as a prisoner. Remember that the psyche is always seeking to be unified, that it's seeking a reconciliation between the persona and shadow. And I would argue that the player, or rather the character, is a projection of that desire. Now I know that sounds a little bit meta, and that's probably a little too far for some of you, but think about it. The Skyrim Civil War never really gets started until the last Dragonborn decides to do something. The whole situation with the Nerevarine prophecy is never even close to resolved until your character decides to do something about it. Ironically then, the prisoner is the only one who is truly free. Because they have been removed from the dichotomies of shadow and persona, self and other, etc., they can actually choose. They can choose one, the other, both, or none of the above. And this is why I so vehemently disagree with the idea that you don't need a third within the enantiomorphic relationship. Yeah, the conflict may exist between Persona and Shadow, but you have to have a third to resolve that conflict. Uh, this kind of goes back to the idea in alchemy, uh, where you have the quarreling couple, right? And uh, alchemical literature always tends to have this. Uh, in, uh, in Star Wars, it's Han and Leia. In Harry Potter, it's Ron and Hermione. And there's usually a third, uh, which is there to kind of mitigate the conflict. And uh, that's always good times. So this is part of the reason why those of you uh, who know that I am really kind of crazy about the Khajiit, that I'm so on about the idea that the Khajiit are not myrrh, because the psyche always seeks to be unified, and the godhead or Anu or whatever has placed within the Arbus a third, outside of the dichotomies of man and myrrh, a third who can speak peace between the quarreling couple of persona and shadow. I should probably mention that I think all of the so-called beast folk are in fact the third, uh, and that would include the Argonians, uh, Imga, etc. Uh, however, not all of them choose to walk the way of reconciliation. Yes, I'm looking at you, Slodes. 
Towards the end of the video, Rotten Deadite and some of the others talked about this idea about what were the Dwemer trying to accomplish with Numidium. And uh, he suggested that maybe they were attempting to undo uh, consciousness, that they wanted to objectify themselves in a sense, that they wanted to become things and not people. And uh, this is something that I've been uh, writing about for quite some time. Uh, some of you may remember that uh, me and a bunch of other crazy Lorebeard people uh, wrote this thing called Landfall Daisier, and uh, I am working on a follow-up to it, uh, dealing with Kat and Razin, and uh, that's called The House of Dusk and Dawn. I don't know when it'll be out, I'm really busy with the Elsewhere mod, uh, but it's got some pretty crazy Dwemer lore in it, and I really hope that you all like it. In any case, uh, I hope that this has been a fun video. Uh, I certainly have enjoyed making it, and uh, I'll see you next time on the Selective's Lorecast, if I could remember to be there. Take care, guys. Kajit love.